Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Live Stocks Money Vlog, where I talk all things money. This has been a huge past seven days in the market with GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, and other stocks at the center of the Wall Street bets drama. Today, I'm going to talk about a stock that's also being talked about on that Reddit, but to a much lesser degree, and it may have some potential from a technical perspective. And this company is Sundala Growers, which is a marijuana producer and distributor that is currently listed on the NASDAQ. If you go to swaggystocks.com, which is a website that you can see was trending on Wall Street bets, this company is sort of down there. But the reason I'm going to talk about it today is that it's probably one of the lower market cap names, if not the lowest market cap names amongst the companies that are listed there at around $900 million. That was prior to today's open. So after the crazy almost 50% pop that it had today, it's probably closer to $1.5 billion now. My overall point is that if it um, catches fire and it begins to really trend heavily on Wall Street bets, it wouldn't take much for the stock to pop relative to some of the other stocks that people are talking about there. So as far as the products this company has, they have a pretty good range. They go all the way from the lower value end with the Grasslands brand to the premium products with the Concierge brand, which would have a more premium pricing. Then within these various brands, they have different formats to appeal to different consumers. So flour, pre-roll, vapes, and concentrates, even oils and topicals uh, for their flagship brand called Sundial. Here you can see the price per gram for the various market segments and how, they, um, how this fits into their various brands. Overall, it appears that uh, their Sundial and Palmetto brands start to compete with one another as far as being mid-range products. That said, the target market appears to be a little different. A Sundial appears to have a more streamlined, kind of simple look as far as packaging and market, marketing material relative to Palmetto, which appears a little more colorful in its packaging and uh, more colorful in the descriptions of their products and their product offerings just seem to have uh, a little bit more complexity. If you've tried these brands or if you have some thoughts, just comment below. I'm, I haven't tried any of these products. I'm not a smoker. Um, so I'd be interested in somebody that's, that's tried these various brands and what they think of the difference between these uh, products. Personally, as an observer, I would think they can just add some flavor combinations maybe to their Sundial brand and try uh, then rather than try to support an entirely additional brand. In some way, I feel that having so many brands for a relatively small company, they might be spreading themselves a little bit too thin and maybe a little bit more focus might be helpful. According to the company, they really haven't made any headway as far as market share over the past few quarters. And this is according to a corporate presentation from November of 2020. The only real positive news they've had, um, at least from an operational perspective, is that they've been getting um, a lot better as far as delivering on time and in full, what they call OTIF, but um, like it was, if you look at the beginning of 2020, they were in like in the low 20s and 30s. By the time you got to the back end of the year, they were well into the 90s. So this provides a little bit of confidence in the management that they can set their mind to something and get something done. That being said, um, the company is not profitable. And if you look at their P&L, their gross margins are massively negative, which definitely looks uh, odd. And the reason for this is, appears to be inventory obsolescence. Now, um, what this means is that there's some sort of issue with spoilage. And if you look at it from a quarter over quarter basis, while their gross, while their OTI after on time and full is getting better, their gross margins are getting worse. So what does this mean? Well, what I think it could potentially mean is that they've just shifted around the problem and they're sort of executing better uh, on supplying the product on time and in full. That's somehow driving an increased amount of spoiled product. So, so they just sort of, you know, shifted shifted the issues around. So, in my opinion, this is something they definitely need to figure out. According to the company, their gross adjusted gross margins is twenty percent, and this adjusts for inventory obsolescence. Now, a couple other things uh, with the company is that they're under the threat of being um, delisted off the Nasdaq if they cannot keep their stock price above one dollar for ten consecutive days between now and I believe the middle of June. Don't quote me, but. Um, this is what I read up. So this would obviously be detrimental to the company if they were delisted. That being said, the company, while it's off its highs in the double digits, it has bounced off its lows in the 20 cent range and broke above a dollar today. And hopefully it can sustain that now for the next little while. With this rebound uh, in the stock price, um, they have done an equity issue for $100 million. And while this will dilute current shareholders, it also wipe out the debts of the company and shore up any potential uh, liquidity problems the company may have in the short term. Having a clean balance sheet, in my opinion, can set up the company well for a potential acquisition. Um, their margins right now aren't the greatest, and um, to be fair, it's not just Sundial. Even larger companies like Aurora and Canopy Growth have their struggles, and it's sort of inevitable that some of these larger dogs will come around maybe and buy Sundial to achieve 
better scale. In my opinion, this is probably the optimal scenario for the stock like this or a company like this. They can sort of stabilize, uh, limp along while maintaining their corner of the market, build up their brand, but then eventually sell because operating a relatively small cannabis company seems like there isn't much money in it right now. So um, you just so you don't think I'm making stuff up, this stuff up, let's take a, a look at the profitability um, of Canopy Growth, their 12-month figures. You can see their gross margin is is also negative and they lost 850 million dollars in operating income over the past 12 months and 1.5 billion in net income and this is one of the big dogs in the industry backed by uh, a very large company constellation brands so something clearly needs to change the industry for it to become more efficient so in conclusion if you do want to jump into a stock like this just know it's totally risky um, and uh, you could lose potentially lose all your money but at the same time you could 10x or even 100x if you play it with the options market so um, just don't invest more than you'd be willing to lose so anyways these are my thoughts on the company i hope you enjoyed my video today please like subscribe and hit that bell notification button to help support and grow our channel keep your feet on the ground your head in the sky over and out <laughs>